The ocean, one of Earth's greatest mysteries. Here in Florida, the ocean houses a diverse ecosystem, including sea turtles, manatees, and various sea birds, such as sandpipers okay. and gulls. However, one of the most interesting and overlooked creatures of Florida's crystal water is the banana fish. Today, we are joined by renowned author, recluse, and banana fish expert, J.D. Salinger, who will join us as we explore the life and legend of banana fish. Hi, I'm J.D. Salinger, and I wrote Catcher in the Rye. This is J.D. Salinger, and he wrote Catcher in the Rye. Today, I'll be your guide as we explore the wonderful world of the banana fish. Banana fish, native to the American East Coast, are curious creatures. Often mistaken for pieces of drift fruit, they're actually highly intelligent animals with intricate mating rituals and strong relationships. Despite the common misconception that banana fish live in banana holes, they are actually capable of building miniature submarine suburban houses. This male banana fish currently lives on his own, as evidenced by the poor interior design. However, he has reached the age that all young banana fish do, where he will strike out on his own and look for a mate. This male banana fish explores the beach and engages in a mating ritual with a female banana fish. Despite appearances, banana fish relationships are often strikingly similar to human ones. Human ones in the 1950s, that is, because this is the 1950s and we are in Florida. The male banana fish often opens and leads the relationship, taking the female on dates, escorting her as they walk, and ordering for her at restaurants. You know, I thought it would be pretty ironic to have the main couple in my short story, A Perfect Day for Banana Fish, be sort of an inversion of these societal norms of the time. While Muriel is pretending everything is fine and imitating the perfect etiquette of the time, Seymour is struggling with post-war stress and PTSD that is actually destroying their relationship and- Hello there, Mr. Salinger. That's enough talking about your silly made-up short story. We're talking about banana fish and their very real mating rituals. What's this? It seems the male banana fish has invited the female over for a date. The two of them seem to be appreciating this piece of abstract expressionism artwork. This style of art was popular in the 50s, which is to say now, because it is the 50s. <laughs> The banana fish is right, you know. I'm personally very well versed in themes of adolescence and adulthood. In both A Catcher in the Rye and A Perfect Day for Banana Fish, I use themes such as the protection of innocence and childhood. Shut up, Mr. Salinger. Let's check back in on our banana fish couple. It seems that the male is hunting to provide for his mate. Banana fish are herbivores and subsist on a diet of mostly algae. And, oh, what's this? It seems the banana fish has found a banana hole. He gets closer to inspect it. Although they provide great nutrients, banana holes also act as dangerous traps for banana fish, as despite their intelligence, they are easily trapped within the holes. Only time will tell if this male is able to resist the temptation. Ha <laughs> <laughs> 
It seems this banana fish has experienced something traumatic. Perhaps his time spent in the hole has left him with lingering memories of the incident, possibly resulting in intrusive thoughts, flashbacks, and changes in mood and demeanor. It sounds like this banana fish is suffering from some form of PTSD. It's common in returned soldiers, but can happen to anyone who experiences trauma. Since I wrote it shortly after the end of World War II, PTSD is also a main theme in my short story, a per- Mr. Salinger, please stay focused. We're trying to make a documentary, not make a series of connections between your short story and a list of topics. This isn't a high school project. We leave the banana fish on the edge of a relationship disaster. Will they be able to make it work? We'll find out when we return after these messages. Hello folks, we interrupt this broadcast to remind you to tune into the 6 o'clock news tonight, where we discuss everything that's happening here in the 1950s and politics. Tonight, we will be discussing the Cold War. Have you read A Perfect Day for Banana Fish? I don't see how that's relevant right now. Anyways, tonight we will be talking about the political, economic, propaganda race that is the Cold War. So many new changes. I wonder how Seymour would react to- We'll also be talking about the many new scientific developments that have been happening during the Cold War. You know, this really reminds me of Seymour's return from World War II. I wonder- I wonder if the shell shock would worsen the effects on everybody, or if- or... We'll also be hearing from President Truman himself. What are his thoughts on the Cold War and what has his impact been so far? Tune in at 6 o'clock tonight to find out. I wonder how Sybil would react to all this. I wonder, would she, would she, I, would... Do you find yourself constantly getting burned? Yes! Many people wear sunscreen to protect themselves from getting burned from the sun. Can I have some? Sunscreen can also symbolize trying to protect yourself from getting burned while chasing after material possessions you think will make you happy, such as this watch, fine jewelry, or this magazine. Do you think you find yourself endlessly purchasing things and not looking for the greater meaning in life? I thought this was an ad for sunscreen. Are you trying to fill empty holes in your life with new technology? I really just need some sunscreen. Are you superficial and only look on the surface of things? Do you find yourself not looking for the deeper meaning of things? I don't know... Uh... Side effects may include noticing the beautiful things in life, appreciating the deeper meaning of things, and severe headaches. <laughs> Sunscreen to protect yourself from getting burned. Ever since the male banana fish's experience in the banana hole, he seems to have been emotionally distant from his mate. Unfortunately, because we are in the 50s, science has not progressed enough for proper treatment. Instead, the male uses sedatives and drugs to combat these symptoms while getting no actual treatment. character Seymour, who was unable to get treatment for his PTSD due to lack of scientific advancement. I don't really see the similarity, Mr. Salinger. <laughs> Why don't you tell us what's going on with the banana fish instead? Well, they seem to be having an argument. PTSD can cause marital disputes and in some cases, suicide. As an example, after the Second World War, there was a huge spike in divorces in the U.S., so maybe the banana fish are experiencing something similar. 
This actually reminds me of how the marriage in my story is. It looks like you're right, Mr. Salinger. It seems the banana fish are having an intense argument. I wonder if they'll be able to survive this rough patch in their relationship. <laughs> it seems that this relationship is beyond saving. The female will leave the male, taking the piece of abstract expressionism artwork with her. The male banana fish will never be the same. Thank you for joining us today as we explored the epic highs and lows of banana fish life. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful day in Florida in the 1950s. We'll see you next time. When our victory is ultimately won, it was just those nasty Nazis who persuaded them to fight, and that Beethoven and Bach are really far worse than their bite. You know, this song by Noel Coward was actually a humorous take on the war, which was a traumatic event, which almost reminds me of my use of the banana fish metaphor in my story A Perfect Day for Banana Fish, and how it affected Seymour's PTSD, and the way it affected Sybil, and Muriel, and, and the three worlds, and the metaphor on how Seymour was clinging on to childhood, and the green world, put me, put me down, I wrote Catcher in the Rye, I wrote Catcher in the Rye! They are not the ones who have to pay. We must be sweet.